this journey will guide inside the ride where we fly virtual roads touch the sky join us here don't be shy inside the ride yeah we hide Hello and welcome to Inside the Ride. This is episode four. I am your host, Cy Bradley, and I'm going to welcome, nice and early into the show, co-host Matt Smithson. Matt, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. I'm all refreshed, recharged. Had a few days off late last week and over the weekend, so I'm looking forward to today's episode to hear about what happened on Sunday Race Club. I haven't <laughs> caught up with it yet, so I can't wait to hear all about it. There's, a, there's there's plenty to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I, I did race yesterday with, with Tel Mariv. I, I want to ask you a few questions about actually Abu Dhabi and, and Tel Mariv specifically and some of the things. I've started to take more notice, Matt, of, of what's happening on the routes and some of those localities as well because obviously I know some of the routes and some of the historic worlds that we've got you know, from those early days of my wushu as well. But it's now the first time, as I'm getting closer to my journey to Abu Dhabi in October, and of course we're going to be talking about the elites when they attend Abu Dhabi in October as well. I've started to take note of some of these sites. So I want to ask you some questions about that. So yes, we're going to be re- recapping Sunday Race Club. We're going to be talking about Zurich and the real world championships that are taking place or the IRL championships that's going to be taking place because we're going to be in Zurich in September as well. And that's the Paracycling World Championships as well. We're going to be talking about the Cyclone Racing League as well, Matt. And I know you, I haven't spoken to you much about this, but it's it's a real game changer. It's a really sort of fantastic project supported by USAC as well. And there's some grants. It's all about yeah, wow. supporting those sort of communities and the, and the diversity, if you like, and getting the youth on bikes and into fitness, into sports. So we're going to talk about that as well. I know you've had a bit of leave. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about, oh, first of all, I'll tell you a bit about Sunday Race Club. First of all, Matt, I don't know who chose this course. I think this is the second time you've done it. That course is punchy. Tel Marib is so punchy. Yeah, so funny story about Tel Marib for um, certainly some of our listeners that have been around a few years is that actually was designed as a standalone world a couple of years ago. And we used to do SRC around there. And you went, you know, the three climbs at the finish, you've got the first steeper one come down, bumps up a little bit, and then it whacks up to the up to the top. You used to actually have to go around that three times. Um, Wow. Yeah, it was so hard that we uh, I think we actually made a a management and executive decision that we weren't going to ever use it again. Um, And then recently, we were looking at some different routes to, to I think, open up a little bit instead of the big climbing ones all the time. So it's a little bit more aligned to what's going to happen at the World Championships. We thought we'll do a few more, a few more punchy ones. Um, and we came up with that because it goes through some nice parts of the Arabia map um, out of Abu Dhabi and Dubai. And, and I think you go through the water tunnel climb as well. And then you head out to Tel Marib and you go up those, those couple of climbs. So, yeah, it's tough. I think that last climb is about five minutes from memory. But it used to be, oh, it was horrible when you had to do three laps of it. It was, especially if you got dropped first time up there, it was a, it was a long afternoon. And well, I think the, the ladies this week went around California. I love that circuit. That's, that's nice. Yeah, yeah the, the, when, when, I want to know when we're going to race that. I, don't, yeah. I haven't raced that yet in SLC. The ladies one, I think, is actually a little bit better than the men's one, to be honest. It, they, I think they go up one of the early climbs, it flattens out a little bit, and then they go up the big climb sort of at the end that's not too steep, where the men's route goes up the Hollywood Hills as well. So we might have a look at a few amendments at that one in, in the future because there's quite a lot of options in that map. There's lots of sort of not so much up and downs, but it's a little bit more steady, some of the climbs through that Area 51 and some things like that. So I think we'll get the men back out there soon. I've got a feeling we're going around Wollongong this week. We haven't been around there for ages. So, um, yeah, another punchy one. That. I'm glad you said that. I, I had people messaging me yesterday after the race saying, where's the final? Where's the final? And it's, I think it's the, you know, the, the one thing that people keep tuning back into this podcast for is, is to find out when the next event is because generally it comes out on the Wednesday podcast and we don't put the sh- start sheets out till later in the week. But I've got two things to ask you about this, Tell Marie, right? First of all, you, you, talk, you spoke about those three sort of punchy climbs at the end. That middle one's not even categorised. I think it needs to be. Yeah. I didn't expect that. I thought uncategorised. I mean, it's like 800 metres to a kilometre, but boy, that takes it out of you. It just saps the legs before you then get onto that final Tel I think it's the June climb, isn't it, that last one? Yeah, I think it gets 15 16% in places too from from what yeah. I recall when we first did it. Um, but yeah, it, it sort of bounces along. And yeah, I haven't ridden it, I'll be honest, with the new <laughs> physics and dynamics in the game. 
So you'd certainly hit it at a little bit more speed and hold that speed a little bit better than what you used to. Uh, it, it's it's a tough it's a tough lap around there. And when we did the championships last year, um, the million dollar event, we went around it in reverse, which was a little bit more sedate on the last stage. Um, and I can tell you right now, there was some game changing moments and money <laughs> moments changed in the last 300 metres of that climb last year. So it's, a, it's an exciting sort of little spot to have a race in. It's not a real world. Um, there is the Telmarie Dunes that are in the UAE where if you sometimes, you, I think if you have a look on YouTube, you can see the crazy four-wheel drive cars racing as far as they can yeah, up, the, um, up the mountains. And I'm pretty <laughs> sure they do that around New Year's. So it's sort of based on that area, I believe. Yeah, well, that's it, you know, the, the Telmary, but then you've got the Lewa Desert as well. You know, yes. we've got the Lewa Desert Sprints and the climb and so on. I tell you what, though, Matt, yesterday, the racing was absolutely ferocious in the men's. I've, I've got to catch up with some of the la- ladies racing from yesterday, but the men's, I can tell you, I, I'm category three, right? And, and the guys just went out of the pen like crazy men yesterday it was absolutely full gas i got to the top of the uh, the aquarium climb as it is i really like that climb it's just a you know if you settle into the rhythm and you use the drafting well you can make it to the top of that climb so i made it over that one i didn't make it over the leeway desert climb with the front grip i got i got spat out then so for my own little community of six riders and we we sort of <laughs> rode in and then punished each other on the final climb but then I watch Category 2 race as well, because I'm, wa- I'm watching the broadcast at the same time as I'm racing as well. And if, if you're in the live stream, that happens. It's re- really cool how that happens. You've got Mr. X100, and you've got Phil off the front from the gate, Phil Graves, straight out the gate. So Category 2 went absolutely crazy. And then Category 1, again, I think you had seven riders go up the road, early doors, and just stay away. And everyone else in that chasing group, it must have been horrible. I think what's happening is people are now starting to race. So instead, for a long time, it was just sitting around waiting for the climb at the end. People are now taking some different tactics, some different options. But I think a lot of it comes down, I think there's two reasons. I think one, it's driven by the World Championships and people getting a bit more comfortable with and a bit fitter and, and all those things. But I think these new physics and dynamics are allowing these things to happen a, a little bit more effectively. If you get a gap now, it's very hard to, very hard to close it down. It, you can't just, you know, yo-yo your way across in a group of three or four people. So once that gap starts to establish, yeah, again, in, in Cat 4 a few weeks ago, I got a little gap with, with a couple of guys that I've never got before that I needed to get to the climb. And anyway, I still dropped in 400 metres when we got there. But yeah, um, and that Liwa Desert one, that's tough because you come out of that aquarium climb that originally on the maps was flat when we first built that, by the way. And then we said, oh, no, we need it. That's, a, that's just a linking road to the two sides of the, um, of the world. And we decided that's why it goes up and then it, it built down quite quickly. But then you hit the Liwa Desert and you forget it's there. I don't know whether you do that, but I do. I think, yes, I got through Aquarium Climb. I'm going to make it to the end here. Then you hit Liwa and you go, I forgot about this one. Yeah, yeah, I, I do that all the time anyway. It's really interesting, like you said there, watching the riders, I think, experiment as well. I mean, first of all, there's more riders than ever ra- racing SRC. We've got some new names in there also. And then on top of that, you've got these sort of changes in the dynamics as well. You know, and I watched the, those final three punchy climbs. That that second one, Matt, I'm going to remind you again, needs categorising because it, it it definitely doesn't deserve to be uncategorised. But I was watching the cat a, the, the cat one races there, and basically you got a group of five or six, and that that five or six had changed a little bit over the duration of the race. And then watch Hayden Pucker. He got dropped, I think, on the third to last climb, that third to last kick, but he managed to close the gap again on the descent. And on the flat, he rode it perfectly. I mean, he's not been riding the platform too long, but he got the dynamics enough and then got onto like, in fairness, he did get dropped again on that final climb. But he gave himself a real fighting chance again just by really being smart and riding those dynamics. And again, you know, that, that Category 2 race, yes, you got Mr. X100 and Phil up the road, but that lead changed so many times. And there was lots of different pockets of groups going off the front and experimenting and trying different things. And it really did make for exciting racing. I think they um, got caught and only ended up running eighth or ninth or something in the end as well. I think he, that, he did. Yeah, he was. Break. I think Panitza, Kuisnen, uh, Alex Heaney rode a really great race as well. Okay. He was another one of those riders. He was just off the front because I got caught by the the two leading riders from Category Two, and Alex, uh, one of my teammates, Nautily, uh in Cat Three, put it in 
put a little dig in for his uh, fellow countryman, Alex Heaney, just to try and drag him across to the front too. Thankfully, they didn't make it because I'd have felt a bit mean if a Category 3 rider would give a little bit of assistance to Cat 2, so it didn't happen. But he, Alex Heaney rode a really great race for third there as well, so it's a really great race. Okay. I the have reason, seen. Yeah, sorry, just talking about that. Yeah, I've I've had a. There's been a few emails in, and we're going to have a look at some recategorization um, as well. I believe in the next day or two. Um, out of that, with these punchy, our categorization's always been set a little bit more around these longer climbs, and now we're seeing these punchier routes that we're using a little bit more. We're getting sort of some results that are starting to tip the the scales one way or another. Um, so we're going to have a meeting, I think, Thursday this week and have a little bit of a look at recategorization. You may find yourself back down in Cat 4 now, Si. You can join me if when I come back out in October with a bit of luck. Um, but, yeah, no, we're going to have a good look at the top of uh, – the top of well, the not the top, but Cat 2 and Cat 3, I think. Cat 4 is pretty good now. We moved a few up a few weeks ago. Um, and Cat 4 results, I did have a quick look at those today because that's my guys. Uh, that looks pretty right now. Cat 1's always right. And we sort of made a bit of a rule that went – if you're top 25-ish or so at the semifinals, you've got to be in Cat 1. So I think we put a couple up last week as well, but we're going to have a look at 2 and 3 later this week. So look forward to what happens there. Yeah, it'd be, I mean, I, I did speak to some of the events team as well, and it's it, they've got this secret recipe, I guess, with the categorization. So I, I've got no no clue. But I, it must be difficult as well, though, because I know I'm right on that. You know, this time last year, I was pretty fit. I you know, even picked up some prize money in Category 3. But I'm not as fit as I was, despite, Matt, the, the live training sessions that I've been been doing this last couple of weeks. It's coming back slowly. But I'm right in the middle there. I'm like middle to or top end of four, not quite there with three. And I'm like, do I, you know, I'm, I'd like some racing. That's the thing. I want some racing. But at the same time, I'm also enjoying, you know, it, it just makes it really hard. I'm, I'm not like put off by having to chase a few groups because even in category three, like I say I had five or six riders around me. We had our own little race even further back down there. And it's, I, I, you know, doing some of the best numbers I've done in about three or four months. But yeah, still. It's, it's really hard because like, for example, you take yourself and oh, I'll take myself because it's the easiest way to do this is I'm good up to three or four minutes. I'm really bad at 10, 15, 20, 30, 40 minutes. So how do you categorize that? So some weeks I could ride cat three, some weeks I'm going to get dropped in cat four. So we're trying to, to, to balance that a little bit because we want to keep people in the same categories throughout at least that monthly series or at least for a few months to get that good clean balance out. But when you start having a group of punchy races together and you're getting those sort of those guys winning all the time, yeah, and we got a couple of really good emails saying, hey, get what you guys are doing, love what we do, love the racing, like you say, but the, you know, it's, it's not working out for us at the moment. So we might have to have a little bit of a look at, do we do a series of punchy ones and a series of climby ones or, or something like that, um, just, to, just to break it up a little bit, get some, right. get some better categorization. But again, it's always those people that are on the cusp of, of the two. But as I say to everybody, if you want to come down, race hard that's our best way of, of figuring this stuff out so don't just sit up like you said i'm still racing to the finish and we can really see that you've pushed all the way through and do some comparisons and go well maybe on a race like that we drop Cy back next month so yeah it's so a difficult I'll, one i look forward to that and, and i could tell you i race all because my quads are in bits they've had to boost the chair up a little bit just because i can't get too low because i might not stand up again but that, that's a good feeling on a monday morning when you you feel like you've done something the day before. Talking about racing, and just while we're on that, of course, just a reminder to the community that we have got these classics going on as well. Totally open now as well, so you don't have to pre-register these. These happen on a Wednesday and a Saturday, multiple time zones. Come and check that out. We've, the team have put together some really great routes for the next couple of weeks as well. And we're going to come on to some new events shortly, Matt. You've got a question for me, though, I think. Yeah, we had a chat the other day about the SRC and, and running a, an open event at the same time in October. So I think I think we'll give that a try. I, I thought that's a good idea. So we might kick that off at, uh, I'm not sure whether we'll do it at the, the men's start or the, or the ladies' start. Um, and we'll just do a combined race, I think, just in the daily events on the same course that people can get out and have a race without the dual recording, without the registration, and hopefully have a bit of a hit out. So we might give that a try in October, I think. Yeah, good. I, I got that on my notes, but uh, as you're the boss, you, you can put these things out there, yeah? Because I know you've been, uh, you've been out and about, so we haven't had a chance to discuss it. But I think that's a really great open event. If you, don't, you, know, if you can't dual record, you just don't have access to that, but you want to come and experience some hard racing and SRC, then I think having an open event. So yeah, like I say, look out for that. That will come in in the future. Um, so I want to get on, Matt, to 
uh, talking about, we spoke about some of the features and some of those sites around Abu Dhabi and Dubai and so on. So I want to talk about some of the experiences that our live finalists are going to experience in October. I had a quick look around the, the website that's there, which is uci.mywoosh.com. That's where all the results are going to be. That's where you can find additional information on the event and the venue and so on. You've been in Abu Dhabi in the UAE for quite some time now. So you can just give us a bit of background of what to expect, you know, the, the food, the culture. Yeah, um, I think the people are in for a, a surprise. And anybody that's come here has, has said the same thing. So we're not a big country town, but it's not a super busy town. So there's no traffic jams. There's eight lane highways. You do 140 kilometers an hour everywhere. Um, and it's a long, skinny sort of island in a way. Um, Abu Dhabi, not actually an island, but what happens is it's not very far from one side to the other, and then there's there's freeways. They're about 20, 30 kilometres long, and they're quite wide, so you get anywhere here very, very quickly. Um, and things to see and do. So uh, everybody has to go and see the Grand Mosque, but I'll give you a, a tip when you come over, Sai, bring the darkest sunglasses you can find, because the white marble <laughs> and the Abu Dhabi sun um, can burn your retinas on the wrong day. So make wow. sure you bring your sunglasses if you're heading to the mosque. That's my number one tip for visiting the mosque in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> um, but what it is, is it's, it, there's a part of it that's a, re, a resort town. So you've got Yas Bay and Yas Marina where there's bars and nightclubs and some of the most fantastic hotels in the Middle East. Um, they do a lovely thing here called brunch, which is, you know, sometimes they're buffets, sometimes they're the or they're, um, a la carte, and it's some of the best food you'll get anywhere in the world. The eating scene here is as good as anywhere in the world that I've been. Um, you've got the Louvre down on Sadriat Island, which is one of the sort of more expensive places where people live. But then from the cycling perspective, you've got uh, Hadariat Island, which is sort of some huge construction going on there at the moment. They've just opened up the world's biggest Kelly Slater wave pool, I believe I wow. saw on the weekend. It's it's finally opened. The velodrome's being built there at the moment. That's the big Colnago um, cafe and concept stores down there. Um, you've got the 10-kilometre circuit down there you can ride on, lit up 24-7. That's the Yas Marina circuit, is it? Or? No, sorry, that's it. That is this is down at Hadariat. So this Hedariat, is down towards okay. the city. Yeah. Um, and where the event is is about halfway between the two. So Hadariat's a great circuit. You can go around. There's mountain biking and there's um, gravel riding oh. and all that, all within the compound. And it's in the game, the Hadariat circuit. So yep. uh, I think the outer loop is actually exactly the same as um, as what there is in in real life. Then you've got um, mm. Yas Marina F1 circuit. So hopefully we'll get out there with a few of the athletes when they're there. It's quite near to where I live. So it's open three mornings a week and two nights a week. And it's open for four or five hours of an evening. So you can get 100K in if you want to. And every wow. morning it's open for two hours. Uh, and yeah, out you go. And every morning there's only a handful of people. You have the place to yourself. It's, it's actually really nice. So there's plenty of riding to be done. You've got Al Wathba, which is a 30 kilometer loop. Um, and there's some smaller loops. I think it's called the double, triple or something, and it's 100 kilometres if you do each of the loops that are there. That's about half an hour out of town. So lots of things from a cycling perspective, lots of beaches. Um, a bit of luck, we might be able to jump out on one of the boats through the waterways, and it, it, it's relaxed. It's not busy. Um, it's, a, it's a really nice place to be with the family. It's a really nice place to jump on your bike. So everyone look forward to, to heading across here. And those that haven't been here, um, hit me up, and we'll, um, I'll give you some tips on, on the best places. Yeah, you, you've got to stop uh, volunteering to have people at your place because uh, you, you can have a full place and it will also get you in trouble as well. But I've got to ask you about the, the weather yep. uh, as well in, in October because I, I actually saw some pictures this weekend because I, I follow the, the Colnago Concept Store down there and Wolfie's and, and Bart as well. And I've seen that Bart and the Colnago guys have got this group ride going on on yesterday. And they all seemed, I mean, seemed to be in short sleeves and jerseys and so on, but it was like mid-morning, I guess, or midday. What should we expect in October? If I want to go and ride Yas, you know, the, the Yas Marina, for example, the circuit yep. on a, you know, it's going to be October time. What, what's the weather going to be like? What's the temperature going to be like, do you think? Well, firstly, Bart's not right. So let's get that out there. Um, middle of summer here, Bart and his full gas ride, FGR, go out on a Saturday morning at 5.30 in the middle of summer and do 100 kilometres every Saturday morning. Uh, and there's quite a group of them go out and do it. I can't even think about doing that. 
Um, but they still go out. There's, you know, there's 20, 30 of them every week. So plenty of people still ride outside in the summer here in the, in the mornings. I've been getting out for the last probably three or four weeks of a morning. It's, it's, it's still warm, but it's, but it's quite bearable for those of us that are not fully adjusted to it. But come October, I'd be thinking you'll be getting up. It'll be 26, 27 degrees in the morning um, and probably top out 34, 35 during the day. So, uh, but it's not a searing heat at that yeah. time of year. It's, it's a little, little bit of humidity, but it's quite bearable. Um, I don't think anyone will have a problem no matter where you're coming from in the world. It's not like those European days where you, it's just mind-blowingly hot sometimes in July and August. It's not like that. They're very rare. Yeah, very rare in the UK, <laughs> good point. But no, I, it's, a, it's a really great time of year. And, and people always think about um, the UAE as being this really hot place and you can't do things. Um, that can be true, but that's only for about eight, nine weeks of the year. Everybody, what people forget to tell you here is you have the best weather you can think of from about the 1st of October through to about the 1st of May. Like it's, it, it, at Christmas time here, it's, 26 degrees when you get up it's 26 degrees at midday and 26 degrees when you go to bed it's just perfect so take a tip from me head over here in um in your winter and it's it's just unbelievable so yeah it should be pretty nice for us and the other thing is it doesn't rain so don't bring your rain jacket well, I will say my, my wife listened to, to last week's show as well because I, I forced her to listen to the show just to get the list of numbers up there as well. And she said, well, when's Matt going to get me over there? Because I, I would like a warm Christmas as well. So we've got to work on that at some point. There is one more thing, Matt, I want to ask you about, actually, because when I was racing yesterday, I already told you I, I watched the broadcast. I, I keep seeing Ivan Nuki on the, the broadcast as well, and he looks like he's, he's in the studio. I know that there's a, an indoor cycling studio down there because we I helped to organise some of the events for the, the Women Moving Forward uh, network as well in the last couple of weeks. And I know a lot of those ladies do that in that centre. Give us, what, what's that centre about? Yeah. Then? So when you come over here and the athletes come over here for the World Championships, we'll all head down to Hedaria. That's the circuit I was talking about. Yep. Now, at Hedaria, you've obviously got the Wolfies and the, the Colnago store. But the Abu Dhabi Cycling Club, it is unbelievable. So instead of having a pop-up tent and leather numbers like most cycling clubs, they've got this this fantastic clubhouse. It's got a service course cafe, which I think Simon Gerrans, um, the ex-Australian pro, yeah. owns, I, I believe. Um, but you can go in there, get a coffee, have something to eat. Um, they've got office spaces, but they've also got these rooms there, like a small auditorium. And what we do is we put the trainers and iPads down there through the summer, so that anybody they that like they like um i think it's open uh, from a more early in the morning right through until quite late of an evening everyone can come down jump on have a ride on my whoosh um, get their training in if they don't have a trainer at home mm -hmm. we've got they can use their bikes we've got our bikes down there um so it's a place yeah. that people st start to gather um it's built up quite a, a big following over the summer this time i think it's i think we're actually closing it up in the next week or two because it's it's sort of outdoor time now yeah um, but yeah. ivan newicki um i've not met ivan but he <laughs> You know, there's a there's a massive cycling scene here, so we've got a lot of a lot of the Filipino ladies um, race on on the platform um, from around here, um, and Ivan is sort of the front of Cat Two on a really hilly course. Yeah, uh, light guy makes really good power, and he races from down at the Abu Dhabi Cycling Club every um, every week. I think he rode the semi final for the World Championship down at You're Abu right. Dhabi Cycling Club. Yeah, so he just heads down there. It's easier than him setting up at home. I think he does some coaching down there with a lot of the kids. So there's lots of kids programs down here. So the Abu Dhabi Cycling Club, this is, this is a genuine true story. If there's, a, if there's kids around and they don't have to be UAE nationals, like my daughter is, is joining this summer, um, you go down and say you want to take up cycling, they provide you with a coach, bunch rides, they'll get you kit. If you haven't got a bike, they'll get you a bike. And there's these bunches and bunches of kids ranging from, I don't know, 10 to 16, 17, riding around Hedaria, riding around gas with coaches, with, you know, they get advised on how to set up their bikes, how to change tyres, how to try. It's, it's a really, really cool thing. And a lot of them were using the ADDC, and I think Ivan coaches some of those people as well. It, it looks phenomenal. And uh, I, I, actually, a friend of mine uh, from the UK used to work at Wolfies for a few years, and I remember talking to him as well. And, you know, you, you talk about that there. And, and what he used to say to me is that, Abu Dhabi in the UAE is like, or Abu Dhabi particularly, was like the most diverse culturally place he, he'd ever lived. You know, and he absolutely loved it. I think he's moved to Canada now, uh, but he was there for years. You know, he's yeah. like, you've you got to come over. You know, it's such an incredible place. So I, I really am excited. 
Yeah, we sound like we're selling it. We're, we're not. I, I, I genuinely just, I really like it here. Like I'm from Sydney. It's busy. It's, um, it's big. It's, you know, I, the weekends here are relaxing. You seem to have more time. The waterways are beautiful. You can, I, I ride out on the road. I've got a couple of loops that I can do. It doesn't have to be in those parks. Works nearby. You know, there's no traffic. Um, petrol's cheap. Food's cheap. Um, yeah, there's no reason to not be here, to be honest. Mate, I'm forever impressed. You said there we're, we're trying to sell it. If, if you managed to uh, be not so busy and read the, the show notes that, uh, <laughs> that that I, myself and the producer, sometimes put together, people have got to realise that Matt doesn't do that. He just rocks up and says, right, let's just go. Ask me some questions. Let's talk and do it. You mentioned pop-up tents and events. This is it's a really nice link. So I want to talk about, we're going to Zurich. We're yeah. going to be at the UCI Road and Paracycling World Championships. I know I briefly mentioned it uh, last week, I think, in last week's show. I think you're going to be there towards, hopefully, towards the end of the week as well. But obviously, this gap between virtual cycling, and I, I'm not even sure there's a gap anymore, but there's sort of a real link and a synergy now, isn't it, between this IRL riding, whether it be on the mountain bikes or the road and, and indoor. You've highlighted it there, you know, just because of culturally and the heat and the environment that you guys, that you've got to ride indoors at some times. But we, you know, even where I am now, we've seen riders, particularly on the ladies' side, move from indoor cycling to outdoor racing. I'm talking about Lucy Harris is a, is a great example. You know, great. I think she was a rower, a bit like Jason Osborne in a way. She was a rower, got into indoor cycling and virtual cycling, and now, you know, in the UK, racing at a really high level. You know, I think she also rode the qualifiers and so on. She's turned up to Sunday Race Club, but... We're sort of seeing this crossover, aren't we, between these athletes, both indoor and outdoor? Yeah, we are. And look, I, I've got interesting views on this um, in a way. Is When I was growing up, you were generally judged on how good a bike rider you are, if that makes sense. Like how you could judge and read a race and handle your bike and do yeah. all those types of yeah. things, right? And that overshadowed yeah. maybe your physiological ability to a point if you could do those things well and you could read a race you you could you were relatively successful right yeah when now if you can't make the numbers it doesn't matter how good you are at those things now i believe the sports changed and i think that indoor cycling's had a lot to do with that because you can have regulated numbers that people can see and share and do all those things trainers are becoming more and more and more accurate now we're talking at the moment with a couple of teams about doing talent id we're talking with some federations about doing talent ID. So this is a very, very easy pathway for people. So it's not just talent ID as in, I'm really good at this, here's my numbers. It's, here's a protocol I've never ridden before and look what I can do. Yep. And so they start to go, well, that's, that's, a, really good, that's a really good pathway. Um, and I think that that's sort of starting to blur the lines a little bit as people are seeing indoor cycling as a way to be noticed for outdoor cycling, which is which is a little bizarre sort of way of, of seeing things. And for me, and I think I've said this on, on here or on um, maybe it was on Chris's podcast, I believe that in the next 10 years, I believe that those club racing outdoor events will really struggle to, to continue um, with all the things that have to happen with approvals and, and people crashing and, and the speeds that we now travel at and all those types of things. I think a lot of that stuff, as indoor cycling gets bigger and better, that will all move move indoors. And I think your local Saturday afternoon club race or your local club time trial and things like that, that okay. will become more and more indoors. But there's a real, there's a blur between it. But to me, maybe I've got a warped view on this because of who we are and what we do. I still want to find a, a way that it is genuinely standalone. Yeah. I, it's got yeah, to work yeah. together. But yeah. it, I, I, I just, I don't want us to have outdoor racing indoors. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, I think you're right. It's a, it's a difficult balance. It's a little bit like you know, we're seeing more and more road riders move to cross in a way, and it cross yep. maintains this sort of separate, unique kind of like mystical feeling about it. Yet we're seeing the same riders cross over, and I'm not saying we'll see the same riders cross over, but we are seeing some of that in the past. But you know, you're you're an Aussie. I'm a Brit. You know, both of those two countries, our two countries, have been known for having great talent identification, particularly on the track over the last ten years. Truth be known, it's, it probably goes a little bit further back in the UK, and then you know, I know you guys really caught up in in that. And 
you know, it, it's really added to the depth and where we were pulling these athletes from. And I, and I was thinking about two riders that we've seen in the semifinals. Hayden Pucker, absolutely immensely strong, but he got on the bike really late. You know, a U- U.S. guy, Farm Watts is his name, you know, as, as his nickname, in, you know, if you like. And then, you know, but he's got phenomenal numbers. And you could see those numbers replicating in IRL racing. Then there's another rider who I spoke to towards the end of last week, Sieb. I can't remember Sieb's surname now, but he's qualified part of the Belgium team. But again, I had a look at his background. He, you know, he's Belgium, so he's from like this traditional cycling background. I imagine he's been riding the bike since the year dot. And he's part of the pro development squad as well. So you've got two riders, similar numbers, slightly different styles of riders, but both making it to the top of our sport. You know, and you've got Cebu saying to me, I really like, I'm from a road background, but I really like cycling esports and I could really see me doing. And then you've got Hayden, who basically has come through cycling esports, who's like, he should be doing something on the road. Yeah. You know, so I think it's really great from both sides to see that. Yeah, and I I don't know either of those guys. I've not spoken to them. Um, Sieb sent a wonderful email after the World Championship uh, semi final saying thank you for what you guys are doing for the sport. So that was that was really nice. Um, but yeah, they, they um, they're making great numbers and they're doing it in a different way. And it's a bit interesting. You talk about track mm-hmm. cycling, and I wonder. I'm only thinking about this sitting here. Is that was always yeah. the pathway to being a good road cyclist for many years. It's, yeah. it's certainly changed in the last few years. But, you know, the Chris Boardman's Graham O'Brien days back in Australia, we had the Charlie Walsh program in the 90s and, and, and all of those McEwens and O'Grady's and McGee's, all those guys came through that, that program. Um, is indoor cycling the new track program um, to, to end up in a road program? Maybe, maybe that's where we are today. Um, it, yeah, it's interesting. What I'm interested in, though, is a lot of these... Um, pros towards the end of their careers uh, are heading towards this gravel racing, right? Yeah. So gravel racing is becoming a really big thing. I'd love to see some of those athletes, male and female, jumping across onto here. Um, It's only an hour, the racing. They don't have to do the work that they would have to do that they've been out on the road for. And so, you know, as a continuation of their career for a couple of years and come out and race Sunday race club, make some money, um, I'd be really interested to see how some of some of those athletes went um, as they transitioned to, you know, you, you get away with doing 12 hours, 14 hours a week, and, and you could go really, really well at, at indoor cycling. So, yeah, it's an invitation to, to some of those to, to come across and we'll help get you set up on Sunday Race Club. Well, it, it, it's a nice link, actually, because uh, we, you and I have got some meetings later this week about the live, live coaching, which is, is escalating and growing. Come and join one of my, my sessions, actually. I'll get a little pull in here while I'm here, which is a Tuesday evening European time or Thursday morning. Of course, many other sessions going on, whether it be Bart, Emma Martin or Lisa. Uh, but we've got more coaches on. But one of the coaches I'm talking about is a, a lady called Danny Shrewsbury. Um, who's a, a sort of a, a UK road pro. Um, she, re- she rode for Team GB, but we, she's now racing gravel. She's going to be going to Gravel World, um, and she's going to be doing some live coaching sessions, um, hopefully starting in October as well. Uh, she's in Europe at the moment racing, but as soon as the, the sort of the colder days come on, she's going to be doing some sessions there. And she's already said to me, can we do Friday endurance sessions? And I'll, we'll sit there for two hours and coach you through endurance sessions. Like, Whatever you want to do, whatever your community wants to do, bring them in and we'll, and we'll get right in there as well. So we're seeing this crossover and hopefully we'll see more and more gravel riders come over as well. We've been, we started this by talking about Zurich and, and the real world. Obviously, you've got riders like Jay Vine, Jason Osborne, you know, as well, who are racing at a really high level, who sort of, in a way, got their start. But we, we talk about Zurich. Switzerland is this new route that, you know, in Zurich course that we've got in there. This is a direct replica of the Zurich circuit that we've got. It's a tough circuit. We spoke about that a couple of weeks ago as well. We're going to be running some special events, Matt, uh, during that week-long event that's taking place IRL. So first of all, you, me, Bar, other members of the team are going to be in Zurich. So come and see us at the sort of thing. We've got this expo area. So we're going to be there with some Cornego bikes and some elite trainers and pop-up tents and We've got some giveaways going too. But we're also in-game. If you can't make it, come and ride the course with us because we're going to do some individual time trials. We're going to shorten the course a little bit because 
I, I rode the full circuit, and I think for an individual time trial without any draft, I would definitely suffer. So yep. I think we're looking at like 15 to 20K prologue each individual time trial distance there. They're going to be happening during that week between the 21st and the 30th of September. We're going to do some road races, Matt, as well on the full circuit. So that's going to be yep. punchy, challenging, testing. I'm going, to, I'm going to put your name down one of those. So expect yeah, a registration yeah. to pop up in your inbox at some no, point. thanks. This is for you then, Matt. We've got some group rides, some social group rides happening on that circuit as well. We're Perfect. just talking to the team that we're going to try and do some unlocks and, and, and so on for those as well. So keep your eye out for those. We'll get some stuff out on social media about those events as well. So if I can uh, persuade our production team, because our production team are the guys who do the filming and so on in Zurich as well, then we, we might do some footage there and I'll ride some of these events on the booth from Zurich. And if, if Matt brings his kit, we'll try and get him on a bike as well at the same time. So that will be like a real crossover between real world cycling and, and virtual cycling. Yeah, no, that, that, I can't wait to get over there. And, and, you know, I can't wait to talk to the community about what their thoughts and, and thinking <laughs> is about my whoosh after, after the World Championship semi final <laughs> and what we've got upcoming. And, and, yeah, just the sheer growth in numbers that we're getting on the platform daily at the moment. I, I know the weather's changing and, and some things like that, but I feel a bit of the community were waiting to see whether we could do this. Um, and I think we've shown that we, we've done this pretty well. So I'm really looking forward to having a chat to, to people about their thoughts about indoor cycling on a whole, about my whoosh, about other platforms, what we can do better, what we can do differently. So, yeah, I'll be, I'll be certainly hanging around over there, um, I think, on the Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, I can't wait to see, hopefully, a little bit of the racing. I think it's going to be a pretty pretty tough circuit for, for a lot of people. I was reading um, Evander Pol's trying to lose a little bit of weight, um, so he he's, mm-hmm. wants to be an outside chance at, at defending. Um, Tade was awesome on the weekend. Yeah, um, absolutely. but I I can't see too many getting to the finish after yeah riding one lap. I think the men have got to do eight and the ladies five um, around there. It's it's going to be a very 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 small group of people coming to that finish line. That's for sure. Well, I when I rode that circuit and I was like, didn't Matt mention they were doing this eight times at the Worlds? I think they've got a they've got like a lake lead in before they get onto that main circuit, and, and the lead in enough, you know, if, if it could be called such a thing, is is tough enough. But that that circuit eight times or five times or even more than once yeah. is incredibly tough. So it's uh, I, I had a look actually where we're going to be based, Matt. So actually where we're based, I think on the on the Mywish booth, we've got the sort of presentation podium the podium is the word I was looking for there as well and I think the start finish is not too far away as well so if you're in and around jury like Matt says come come and uh, search us out um, you know and come and chat with the team tell us what you want to see uh, you know coming up in, in there as well I need to talk Matt about another really cool thing that, that's happening in this space and we spoke about the diversity in, in the community as well um, we're going to be working with the Cyclone Racing League and I know Perfect. I haven't managed to, to bring you up to speed on this too much but Essentially, the Cyclo, the Cyclo Racing League, we're in partnership with Revo Race, and Revo Race is a Dr. Mark Janus at the UK, and it's this really cool platform where basically you can compete virtually or IRL in a bunch of sports and activities, including virtual cycling on the MyWish platform. And it might be road racing, it might be team time trials. You could also go and basically try and ride outside, record your time on Revo Race, and you can have this stage race if you like that's partially virtual partially IRL partially indoor rowing or outdoor rowing it's a really cool platform so we've partnered with Revo Race basically to support the Cyclone Racing League and that's with a guy called Milt Sharp Milt Sharp is is basically part of this Major Taylor Cycling Club in the US I'm not sure if you know Major Taylor was but essentially he was like this iconic first black black cyclist in the UK and he was like a legendary cyclist sprinter track cyclist I think he was like the first pro black cyclist basically and we're talking like 1900s here um 1899 something like that it, it is tremendous uh, and Milk Sharp is part of that but as part of this so the reason why Cyclone Racing League have, have chose my wish this does feel like a little bit of a sell now as well but it's because um it's about the accessibility and it's not just Excel accessibility to equipment, but also the knowledge. So Cyclone Racing League, yes, we'll be putting on these events, but they're also going to be making use of this live coaching facility. 
So basically, if you're part of these historically black community colleges and universities in the US and you've never ridden the bike in before, the universities, some of these universities have actually got grants from USAC, you know, um, essentially to support this and, and there's some collaboration with uh, EF Cycling and Cannondale and so on to support that. And basically, Milt and the team will be live on the video coaching you through. So yeah. yes, you can race, but you'll get this live coaching as well. So really looking forward to that. That's going to be kicking off the 22nd of October. So again, if you're in the US, you're part of the, the sort of the collegiate university network, then go and check out the Cyclone Racing League. But again, Matt, I just think it highlights that that diversity and the accessibility when you've got a zero, you know, zero cost platform like my wish. Yeah, c- correct. And it's accessible for everybody at zero cost. Um, it, it makes it easy. It makes it easy for people to come on and give cycling a try. Um, if they're getting grants for the other equipment, for bikes supported from brands or or from the US Cycling Federation or, or whoever the grants are coming from for trainers and, and some things like that, it's a really easy thing um, to just jump on and, and try my wish, create accounts. You don't have to share accounts. You can have your own, or all of those type of things. The best part about this stuff, though, Sai, is we don't have to have a catch-up each week because I get updated on all the things that are going on in the <laughs> yeah. podcast. So that but, sounds fantastic. I, I Yeah, I, I did see a quick uh, email g- glance at that one last week, but uh, that's that's great for them and great for us that we can work together. And, and you know, just it, as, as I always say, I, I just want to bring... <laughs> whether they're 13 year old kids like I was that started mm-hmm. riding a bike or, or, you know, middle-aged people or whoever it is. Um, if we can help get people on bikes, enjoy this lifestyle, this hobby, wh- whatever we want to call it uh, and make it a bit of entertaining and fun mm-hmm. and, and, you know, have a bit of banter with some mates and, and that type of stuff, then, you know, it, it's all worthwhile. It, it does all link. There is, there is some structure to this show because again, it's just another example, like you said, of that, that talent ID and that pathway of bringing youth through into cycling you know just by making it accessible is is really part of it one more thing i wanted to mention before as well because we spoke about those events for for Zurich that we're going to do with the time trials and road races community rides and so on matt you mentioned a couple of weeks ago i think in episode two that that we may do a, a v everest in we were inspired by jeff rooney of course and ben lee members of the community have done this already and, and we're going to try and do that probably New Year, somewhere around that, January. We're, we're trying to push it as, as far back so you and I can actually get some fitness in the legs before we get there. However, I did pitch the idea that we, we are going to do a community challenge at the end of October. October is going to be the biggest month, I think, Matt, in the MyWoosh history, essentially. Just, you know, we've got the World Championships happening, October 26th on MyWoosh, of course. So I thought, well, why don't we make this the biggest month, not only just with the events we're putting on, but... The challenge is, can we cover the most distance ever covered in one month on my whoosh? Can we climb the most elevation that's ever been recorded as a community, as a group on my whoosh in October? So I thought we'd, we'd like, accumulate this into a grand finale. And it's not a V Everest because Matt's already already sort of said, I, I hope it's not a V Everest. No, but we are going to do a community climb at the end of October. We've got to set the date. So again, keep watching social medias for that. We've got to pick the climber. I'm thinking endurance climb, but I'm open to ideas. Whether we can get part way up snowfall or something like that, we'll figure out those details. But keep your eyes open. Let us know what you think. Give us your ideas. What should we do? The end of October, an epic community climb. Let us know in the chat, in the descriptions below, over in social media. Matt, what would what would you think? Endurance climb? Yeah, I I think the endurance climb. I think it's a it's something that anybody can achieve. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it's easy, um, but but anybody, whether you're a one and a half water kilo rider and new to the sport, uh-huh. um, or you're a you know seasoned pro type thing, you can <laughs> you can get up there. Um, so I think as a community, and I like the climb because mm-hmm. it's got the steep bits, and they're only about three kilometres, and then we get that little bit of recovery. We can grab a drink, we can do whatever we want to do, and 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 just get through the because it, it's like stairs. Um, so I think that's a that's a perfect climb to do it. It'd be great to get. Uh, I just. I, I have a real feel that we've got this community now um, yep. with my wish. We're getting a lot of support, a lot of stuff on our Facebook page. And, and I get a lot of emails that come in that say, hey, you guys are doing a really good thing here. Um, and it'd be really nice to be able to bring all that into one place. So if we can pull something like that together for the end of October, just as it starts really cooling down, 
um, that I think that that'd be and and we can do that that last few days maybe after the World Championships yeah. as a bit of a celebratory type of thing. Um, I think that'd be great, or maybe the the weekend before. We'll, we'll figure that out for sure. But I, I think it's a great idea. I think it sort of kicks everything one off, and we can all you know chat and. We can well, even I think do some live. It, it was getting getting for after, and then uh, if we get some of the elites ride, if if the legs are still sore, maybe you know they can also just stop at level two, three, <laughs> or four, whatever the, those stairs are on that endurance climb as well. Matt, great to see you today. I, was, I hope you had a great leave. You, you know, and uh, you get some recovery this week as well before we get to Zurich. Appreciate everyone in the community taking your time to listen to the show. As always, like, subscribe, comment, give us your feedback on everything we've discussed today. This has been episode four of Inside the Ride by My Wish, and we'll see you soon for episode five. On this journey, we'll guide inside the ride where we fly. Virtual roads touch the sky. Join us here, don't be shy.